what up everyone welcome back to some structure free learning so in this video we're gonna do a basic example problem on calculating the critical load of an axially loaded member especially when it's in compression a lot of people call it a column what we have is essentially a timber structure this horizontal beam is being supported by this vertical element which we call a column right here and it's pin connected so this little band here that's going across the web we're going to assume that is a pin connection then we go three meters down and down here this is a fixed connection and if I look at a cross section AA or if I make a cut through here and I look up what I'll see is this picture right here and here I'll see a rectangular cross section 100 millimeters by 50 millimeters what you'll see is I labeled local axes or the cross section X and Y corresponds with this so that if my column were to buckle out of plane which means means it would be sticking out in your face this would be about the x-axis whereas if it were buckling about the y-axis over here this would be in the plane of the video of the screen and it would be going kind of you see like a curvy sinusoidal shape you know up left and right if you will all right and the other information that's given to us is that we have timber and it's got a modulus of elasticity of 13 gigapascals and a yield strength of 35 megapascals and we're going to see what how that comes into play later and what we want to do in this problem is solve for the critical load using the Euler buckling formula and maybe you've also seen the formula in terms of the radius of gyration as a PCR as this equation here where this KL over R represents what's called the slenderness ratio and I'm gonna assume that you've you know you're familiar with all these variables but this R here may be one that you're not so familiar with is the radius of gyration which is equal to the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the area alright so the way we're gonna approach this problem is the first thing we're gonna do is determine all the geometric properties and that's things like the area moment of inertia about any axes and in this case also the radius of gyrations the next thing that we want to do is determine the effective length factors and here we want to determine essentially what is called kx and ky and it depends on the boundary conditions so that we look at the shape of buckling if you will the buckled length about the x and the y axes the next thing we want to do is determine the governing slenderness ratio and that is essentially KL over R which is the effective length uh, divided by the radius of gyration but the governing slenderness ratio is the maximum slenderness ratio and then the last and but not least is to determine the actual critical load using the Euler buckling formula alright so the first thing I want to do is determine the geometric properties and if I look at my Euler buckling formula which is right here I can see that I'm gonna need the cross-sectional area I'm also gonna need the length which I already got I, I need the effective length factors which we'll do later but I also need this radius of gyration this radius of gyration here this R and I need it about both axes because I have a moment of inertia about the X I have a moment of inertia about the Y so I'm gonna have a radius of gyration RX and RY as well so the first things first let's go ahead and determine the area of this which is pretty simple area base times height and that's gonna be 5,000 millimeters squared the moment of inertia about the x-axis this would be about this horizontal x here which will be 1 12th base times the height cubed and this will come out to 1.042 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth and then similarly the moment of inertia about the y and in this case because I'm, I'm going about this axis the vertical axis this 50 millimeters now represents my base and the 100 millimeters represents my height 4.167 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the fourth and now I can go ahead and solve for the radius of gyration this Rx is equal to the square root of Ix over a which if you go ahead and substitute this will come out to 14.43 millimeters and then Ry the radius of gyration about the y 28.87 millimeters now the next thing we want to do is determine the effective length factors which depends on the boundary conditions and what we said here is that the top here is pinned about the X and the Y and this bottom is fixed about the X and Y so what we do is take this structure this real life structure and idealize it or model it as follows pinned at the top so here's my three meter long column or vertical member and it's pinned here and fixed down here and this thing's three meters long and so what this the kx is is basically a a factor for the buckled shape or buckled length and if I buckle in the in plane here my shape will look like my buckled shape will look something like this and it, what it means is that this buckled length is 0.7 times the original length of 
of right here of this of this column. So the seventy percent of my length is buckled, if you will. And what this means would be that k k. In this case, what I've drawn here is buckling about the y-axis. And so here, this ky would be 0 0.7. And because my boundary conditions are the same in the x, kx is also 0 0.7. And a lot of times, you can find these factors. They're, tab they're tabulated in a lot of textbooks. Or if you're, if you're a steel designer, you know the theoretical k values are tabulated in, in the AISC manual. But if you're not sure what a k value is, you probably have to go back and do some more work and understanding how to, how, where these values come from. And so the next thing that we want to do is actually calculate now the governing slenderness ratio. Now, this governing slenderness ratio is the maximum of the two possible slenderness ratios, which is a comparison of the slenderness ratios for the x or buckling about the x-axis and the slenderness ratio for buckling about the y-axis. If I go through and I substitute the numbers, what I get is that KL over R is the maximum of 145.5 and 72.75. And obviously the maximum of this is 145.5 and that tells me that my buckling about the x-axis here governs. So what's left for me to do now is to actually just calculate the critical load using the Euler buckling formula. This PCR is going to be equal to, here's the formula, it's going to be equal to pi squared times the modulus of elasticity of this timber, which is 13 GPA or 13 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. I like to convert into kilonewtons and millimeters just because, especially if I'm using GPA, just because it lends itself to easy con conversion. And one GPA is equal to one kilonewton per millimeter squared. And the area is 5,000 millimeters squared. Here, the slenderness ratio, again, is a ratio, is dimensionless, 145.5 squared. And if I plug and chug, 30.31 kilonewtons. And that's the critical load. So if I if this axial load in compression reaches 30.31 kilonewtons, I expect it to buckle about the x-axis, or in this case, out of plane, so in your face, <laughs> or something I would say on the basketball court. <laughs> Sucker! Now another thing that you're often asked to do is compare whether uh, it'll yield before it buckles or if it'll buckle before it yields. And in most cases, in fact, you know, maybe 98% of all cases, that, that's a number I just pulled out of nowhere, all right? But most cases, it's going to buckle before it yields unless you have a super squat, you know, like pedestal looking thing. What you're trying to do is you're comparing stresses. To calculate my critical stress, sigma CR, this would just be PCR divided by A, which is really is just you know this oh you can't see that which is really just this term right here and when you go ahead and calculate that this is 6.061 megapascals and here the we were told that the yield stress sigma y was uh 35 megapascals therefore sigma cr is less than sigma y therefore this will buckle before yielding and here's my buckling load Here's my comparison of stresses. Okay, if you have any other questions, let me know. Take it easy. See ya.